Today, Thomas Halbert and I, we're trying to become better people, so we're gonna be talking about not focusing so much on negativity. You ready to do this? We're ready. What is up, everybody? It's Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And today, I am joined by the wonderful, the amazing, the beautiful, Thomas Halbert. How are you feeling today, Thomas? I'm feeling great! <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, something that I was, that I've been checking in on myself a lot, and Thomas and I were talking about, it's something, it's kind of a, um, something that we're trying to do this new year, is not focus so much on the negativity, all right? So, I'm somebody who loves to clap back. Have you noticed that you do that too, Thomas, sometimes on Twitter? Because I do that. I put comments out. All right, he doesn't do that, so he doesn't know what I'm talking about. I don't know at all. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about where, like, I, I, I analyze myself, and I kind of want to know where mine stems from. And me, I got picked on. I got bullied. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover, you know? But I learned how to come back with my words. So... <laughs> Me? Is that is that something that you can relate to? I mean, yeah, like, um, I don't know how to explain it, but honestly, like, when it comes to me, I feel like I'm a very loving person. I feel like I care for people a lot, but what I feel like that is being kind of, I don't know, like, when, okay, so I, it's hard to explain, but, like, when you feel like you're doing right by others, when you feel like you're, mm. when you feel like you're, I don't know, I just don't like it when people try to tell me who I am. Exactly. No, I could definitely relate to that. Like, some criticism that I've got, and you can tell me a little something about, you know, this, if, like, if, you, if you think this, like, people have told me, like, the only reason I do my channel is for views or for money, and I think I get defensive when somebody's trying to tell me what my motives are or what right. my intentions are, and I'm like, right. you don't know me. So does that kind of affect you? Do you think that might be the root, like, where that's coming from? Yeah, because it's just like, I understand that everyone is allowed to have their opinion and they're allowed to have, voice their concerns or their critiques and all that stuff. But for me, it's like when I have put my heart and, heart and soul into something or when I know that I have certain intentions for things and I go into things feeling like this and this and then I have someone completely left field being like, no, this is not what you're doing. This is not what you're doing. This is not what you're doing. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> um, right. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah. So it's just like, it, it freaks me out because like, not like freaks me out, like scares me, but it's just like, it, it's jarring in a sense of like, well, I don't, I don't understand where you where this is coming from. So it's like, it's more of like, for me, I either A, get defensive very quickly, very quickly. Like, I'm just like, no, I have to defend myself. I have to defend myself. I have to change their mind because not only am I someone, I feel like I'm, I like to consider myself a people pleaser in all the sense. Mm. So like, when I feel like someone doesn't like me, I'm like, why? Why don't you like me? Why, mm. why what can I do? What, how can I change your mind? How can I be like, no, this is, this is how I am. This is how I am. Like, let me show you that I'm, you know, not what you're trying to tell me I am. So, let me ask you this, because, man, this is why we get along. Like, I'm, I, I call myself a recovering people pleaser, right? Like, do you think that's healthy or unhealthy that we try to switch people's view about us? Like, do you think, because sometimes I ask myself, like, am I putting in too much effort trying to switch somebody's view on me? And then, and then, in turn, when I tweet about it or something, like, am I am I showcasing who I'm not, right? Because we're saying we're loving, we're caring, we care about people, but when I put somebody on blast, is that kind of the opposite of what I'm trying to do? So there's two questions there. Do you think it's bad that we're trying to switch people's opinions of us? And do you think it's counterproductive for us to put people on blast publicly? You know, okay, for the second, I got a package. <laughs> <laughs> um, for the second question, I would say I, I definitely, like, growing up over these past few months, like, doing a lot of soul searching, I've come to realize that it is kind of counterproductive. 
and hearing other people's opinions on it when I do like go off on Twitter where I'm like, oh, cause I am an avid indirect researcher. Like I am so obsessed with seeing how well people are receiving me because I want to make sure I'm putting my best self out there. You know what I mean? Like I want to make sure that people are, you know, receiving me the way that I want them to receive me. And like, that's not, you know, any sort of whatever, but it's just like, I don't want to come off as like a bitch. So I go on Twitter and I'm like, I look at my indirects and then I'm like, you said what about who? And then I'll, <laughs> and then I'll quote tweet it being like, absolutely not, sweetie. And I think that's where it's just like, I don't need to do that. It's just a person with a random person on the internet with, a, with an opinion. And I think it's counterproductive because not only does it to show people that I'm petty, but it shows people that I'm bothered mm -hmm. by this. And I, it looks like I'm trying to overcompensate for something where I'm trying to, like, it, it just, it's not a cute look. It's really not a cute look. And it's, it's something I'm still struggling with and something I'm still, like, trying to fight. And, like, because I, it, like, ooh, ooh, like Reddit. Like going on a Reddit, going on a like, oh my God, Guru Gossiper. I, got, I had to get, dude, I had to get off that thing. Somebody told me they're like, hey, they're talking about you on Guru Gossip. I'm like, oh, what's this? Let me find out some things. And uh-uh, you want to talk about a toxic community. Guru Gossip is literally like, they, it's like, oh, it's a fucking war zone. How much time do you spend on, how, when you do it, how much time do you spend researching yourself? Not much. Okay. I would say on Twitter once a day. For sure. Okay. Because I'm just always on Twitter. But like when it comes to Reddit, honestly, Reddit, when I post a new video, I go to Reddit. Because yeah. I want to see what they're saying. Like, I'm, and I'm, I don't mind opening up or saying this or exposing myself about that because it's just like, I want to see what they're saying. I want to see how my video is being received. Because for me, I want to change and I want to improve myself. And the only way you're going to improve yourself is looking at the critiques rather than the positive comments. And I know that's like, net, like, you don't, like, ignore the hate, but also the same sense, like, what what is it that I'm doing wrong? Something something that I've been struggling with, because I've had some people say I can't take criticism. I love me some criticism, right? The problem is there's no way to filter your YouTube comments or Reddit or Twitter with, with no with, with constructive criticism right. and people just putting you on blast. Right. So when you're trying to research and find out how you can improve, you're gonna see people just calling you names, telling you, you know, and like there's no way for us to filter that, so if, you know what I mean? So it's hard not to get defensive when it's all just kind of mixed into one bowl. Or, or am I crazy on that? Do you, do, do you get what I mean? Yeah, I think, okay. So when it comes to like constructive criticism, there's, or criticism in general, there's constructive and then there's destructive. Ooh. There's there being like, hey, like, okay, so recently I launched a series, a new series called Battle of the Brands. Which is sick. You know, and a lot of people don't agree. A lot of people are like, well, this is like, and uh, listen, I got so many of my followers being like, yo, I think this is a really cool idea, but I feel like you can do it like this. I feel like you can implement this. That's constructive criticism. That's like, okay, I like what, how you're going about this, but let's do something like this too. It's like, they put their opinions in without tearing me down or without tearing down the situation because that's being like, Hey, this is a fucking dumbass, stupid, idiotic video. Um, delete it, fatty. I'm just like, ah, no, ha. And then I'm just like, okay, well, first of all, you bitch. And I'm like, and then I'm just like, and then they get, they get mad at me like, well, I was just voicing my opinion. I'm like, well, I, I called you bitch. I was voicing my opinion too, bitch. It's crazy. We must have the same, the same commenters because I get the exact same one. Like, why Cause I'm just it? like, I'm just like. I, it's like so out of pocket and I'm like, I, and for me, it drives me crazy that I have to sit here. Okay. <laughs> I know that I've put myself in a position to be criticized. Mm. I know I put myself in this position. I'm mm -hmm. a public figure. You know, I'm allowed, people can say whatever. I, I'm, I'm a public figure. People have the right to voice their opinions on me. But at what point is your opinion just straight out fucking bullying someone? Yeah. At what point is your constructive criticism just tearing someone down? Mm -hmm. At what point is it that? And that's my problem because, and those are usually the comments I respond to. So 
part of the reason we are react to rather yeah and part of the reason we made this is because i saw something else going on with another influencer today where their fans were saying you focus too much on the negative so let me ask you this because this is something that i'm working on like do you ever find yourself how often do you like comment and retweet constructive criticism or do you just fly past and you're like okay that's good okay that's good i'll take that but how wow. often how often do you showcase that because i think that's a problem that i have is that i'm not showcasing like hey this is how you give constructive right. criticism so how am i teaching people the type of criticism that i am taking i that's a good point because you know, but I feel like I pride myself on being so interactive with my followers or just people in general that, okay, so the thing with me and how I act, I'm, I react to everyone. I reply to everyone. I retweet everything. I reply to everything, almost everything. Can't get too crazy. Yeah, but like on my YouTube comments for Battle of the Brands, I there were so many constructive co comments, and I would like them. I would reply to them, be like, "Thank you for the like, okay. thank you for the input, stuff like that." I mean, I'm not screenshotting and putting on Twitter or putting on Instagram. I'm like, this is how you guys do constructive criticism, stupid. Like, I'm not doing that, but I'm. I, I reply. I read everything. I comment to pretty much anything, anything that has some sort of positivity behind it. Whether it's constructive criticism or it's a nice comment or it's whatever, something like, oh, you have a nice day. I respond to it. I retweet it. I like it. I will quote tweet it. The thing people don't, because I also have to understand that currently, right now, in the climate of my life, I have a target on my back. Mm -hmm. And I people want to see me fail. People want to see me fuck up. And people right now, their focal point is, what is Thomas doing wrong? And where I'm messing up at mm -hmm. is... While I have this target on my back, I'm not being smart about how I'm moving, and I'm still acting like I don't have this target on my back. I'm still acting like... Well, let me ask you this. Perception versus reality is something I'm always fascinated with. Do you think that you're focusing more, and I'm asking this for myself too, do you think you're focusing more on the people who have the target on your back and want to see you fail than you are focusing on the people who want to see you succeed. Like, I signed up for this collab because I see that you are willing to change and willing to grow. So, do you think that you, you give too much focus to the people who want to see you fail rather than the ones who want to see you succeed? Definitely. I mean, there's, I mean, there's been a lot of research recently, and I will link you the article, but there's research saying that our brains hold on to negativity more than positivity. Yeah, I talk about that all the time. I mean, yeah. bias, yeah. It's definitely like, that's full on fucking science. And I think like, when I had just like this influx of just the worst things being said about me, I my brain went from, oh, all this lovingness, all this great things that's happening to me. Yeah. Like, all this horrible shit that's being said. Because it's just like, it, I also coin myself a perfectionist for the most part, or a, again, a people pleaser. And when I see all these people hating me, I'm like, no, no. Yeah. So, and I'm like, and I know it's so fucked up for me because I'll completely ignore the people that are rooting for me. And I'll yeah. focus my attention on people that hate me because I want to please them now. Because these people are already good. They, they're they okay with hard, who I am. Right? Yeah. yeah, they're okay with who I am. They're okay with what I'm doing. So now it's time to focus on the people that hate me because I want to please them. I want to change their minds. Yeah. And, and I think, I just want to interject real quick. I think the importance for everybody watching this is, although Thomas and I are acknowledging this, it doesn't make it right, but it's something that we're right. working on. Right? And that's, that, that's what I hate currently about the climate of the world is that we're not allowed to talk about our fuck ups or talk about our vices and our things that we messed up on because it's taken as you're you're not allowed to not be perfect in this society and yes it's a little bit nauseating because i have well, I'm a human being. I fucked up, and he's fucked up. The person behind that camera right now, just seeing she's fucked up. My cats are fucked up. Everyone has <laughs> fucked up at some point. Archie peed on my carpet. Right? He fucked up. Yeah. That was very. That was a no-no. <laughs> and it's just like 
But no one wants to hear that. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see the fuck up. No one wants to see that or hear about it because now it's like this tainted perception that they had about you in the yeah. first place. So it's like, no, okay, perfect example. Ariana Grande, she got Korean stove or something tattooed on her palm. <laughs> or Japanese barbecue tattooed on her palm. Yeah. And people were like, no, not my fave. My fave didn't fuck up. Yeah. Like they don't want to. They don't want to accept that they're like someone has fucked up, and it's okay to accept that you fucked up and that someone else has fucked up. Yeah, something something that uh, I'm eventually gonna make a video about because I've had some people comment on my quality or my camera equipment that I use. But no, like one of the reasons I do very low budget stuff, aside from having an excuse to save money, but <laughs> one of the reasons I do low budget stuff is because. I, I want to show my audience that it's okay to not be perfect. Like I don't edit out, like when I trip over my words, I don't edit that out because yeah. I want people to see that, you yeah. know? And I've had people compliment me on that because I don't do a lot of jump cuts. My girlfriend, she'll be sitting with me while I'm recording and she's like, you should cut out that part. I'm like, no, I want people to see that I mess up my words and I laugh at myself because like you said, we, we have a climate where people aren't seeing that. And right. One thing that I love about meeting other creators and stuff is that we're all just people, you know? People put others on this high pedestal, but we're just people. But something I try to do is not use that as an excuse to continue to screw up. But that's what I respect about you is because you're trying to take your past and turn it into a growing experience. That's why I wanted to do this video topic. Let's talk about that. Ooh, let's. We're about to talk. So, let me get my Oprah pose. You know how Oprah, when she did her like, like when she did that talk show with Lindsay Lohan, and she was just like, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's how I'm getting. So I have a great group of people behind me. Before I had a team, I had a friend, Danielle, who was probably the only person in my life to this day that would stop me and be like, you're being a fucking idiot. You're fucking up, and it's disgusting. Yeah. And the thing with me is, I was in this la la land for a very like fairy tale fantasy world for a long time where I'm like I can do whatever I want I can say whatever because I was getting away with it I was getting away with getting you know, enabled yeah I was getting enabled because I had bad people around me I had no one that cared about me doing well they wanted to see me be messy they wanted to see me mm -hmm. be dramatic and all that stuff and it took like talking to Danielle like because her and I were off and on off and on friends for a while but we really became very close when I broke up with my ex and all that stuff like I called her and I told her what was going on with everything and she was like you like before anything happened she was like first of all dumbass <laughs> <laughs> um, to hear it from someone else and she's also like not to turn anyone off but she's gone to school for uh, psychology mm -hmm. she's been to school for that she has you know she's graduated everything and she also is a psychic, so she's a psychologist and a psychic. She's psychic also, psychologist. She's, she's a both of them, and getting her perspective on everything, and her telling me like, "Yo, you're an awful person right now. Like you're being a fucking awful person." Yeah. And you know, seeing your video about me too, like like being open to a different outsider perspective of yeah. me really opened my mind up to how I was acting yeah. and how I was. Because I feel like, and this is like, you know, whatever, but I feel, I feel like a lot of people these days are in their own delusions. Yep. And I was definitely one of those people who was just in my own delusion. Like, oh, I can't do anything wrong. I can't fuck up. Like, yeah. everything I'm doing is good. I'm making all this money. I have all these subscribers coming in. And I was definitely like, for me, it was, everyone loves me now. Yeah. And it was like, I... I guess the, I, when this developed for me, it was like in high school, and there's a lot of trauma that goes into why I acted the way I did, and I can't talk about that because that'll make this video very sensitive content. We ain't got time for that one. Um, yeah, <laughs> but in hi, just like an example of my behavior, like in high school, I would get so mad that I wasn't sitting with the popular kids. Mm. I was getting so mad that I couldn't be, accept, I wasn't being accepted by people that I looked up to, or I looked as peers and it would make me so mad so I would do everything I could to feel accepted. So that meant like falling into delusion, changing who I was, mm -hmm. presenting a different way, yeah. hiding like my real self 
So not people can't judge my real self. Yeah. People will judge this fake, like not really fake, but like this projection of a different, like you know, yeah. like this whole facade of who I really yeah. am. And and this is like something that like your whole story about Danielle calling you out on your shit. Like something I'm always preaching to all of you on my channel is we need to keep people around who tell us what we need to hear and not what we want to hear. Right. Right. Like that's why I don't, love. Yes, men don't do shit for yeah. you, sis. Yeah, and that's that's why I love my beautiful girlfriend Tristan. Everybody makes fun of me because I always refer to her as my beautiful girlfriend. You think that's sweet though, huh? Just say yes. That's cute. <laughs> but she keeps me grounded. I'm so anti relationships now. <laughs> I'm like, a, I'm jaded. That's a whole nother video. But she keeps me grounded. Like she will tell me, Chris, you are screwing up. Doesn't mean I always like to hear it, but I, I need that in my life because I'm actually reading a new book called Ego is the Enemy, and it talks about how that can destroy us. I destroyed a previous career where I got to travel around the world and stuff because my ego just went, and I completely ruined it. So I want to circle this back to Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> no, I, man, we can have a conversation all day, but like circle it back to that. So something that I do because I'm trying to be an example for people and stuff like that. And the battle that I'm fighting is, I want to teach people how to stick up for themselves. You know what I mean? Like that, and I don't know if I'm justifying my clapbacks as that, right? Like, hey, stick up for yourself. You know, if somebody's talking trash, it's okay to stick up for yourself in a respectful way. Like I don't say like, you know, but your brows look shitty or whatever it is. Do you ever do that? <laughs> but so I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like, what? Where do you? Where do you think? Like, looking forward in this path of both you and I trying to grow, where does it become not getting bullied and sticking up for yourself? How can you and me, you and I, do that in a way where we're not blasting people, but we still stick up for ourselves? I'm gonna keep it real to you. Mm -hmm. I feel like we can't. I feel like. Yeah, people are gonna say what they wanna say, but at least for me, at this point, like moving, like especially like from this day forward, for me, it's like I don't want to give them the the feeling that I've acknowledged their bullying or their they don't deserve that acknowledgement. I mean, I've had people. I mean, there is there's a time and a place to be like, hey, this isn't nice, and it's like there's a time and a place like you don't you shouldn't be talking to people like this, mm. and you know I've tried tried to display that kind of behavior. Like, you can't talk to me like this. You can't talk to people like this. Mm -hmm. You need to be a nice person. Like, for example, I did a, a, a video with Peter Mon. And- Shout out to Peter. Hey, shout out to Peter, hey boo. And I t retweeted or I posted about it or whatever and someone had said something awful about him. And it was just like, where where was this, What when and where is this necessary? Yeah. When and where was like, just, if you don't like him, just just don't like him and go. Like, yeah. just if you don't like me, just don't like me and go. Like, you don't need to yeah. be like, Thomas Hubbard's a fugly cunt. You don't need to be like that. Yeah. Just be like, put it in your diary, sis, because I don't, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> that should be a new catchphrase. Put it in your, in your diary. For real, put it in your diary because I don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear shit about you. Yeah. Like, the only shit I want to hear about me is if it's constructive or if it's like, but at the same time, it's like, if someone's going to, ooh, because... Back when I was being called a fag here and there in like elementary mm. school, middle school, I would snap. Because yeah. you're like, you're, I mean, obviously flaming, but when people would try to like tell me who I am, when this is an uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, it's like, I would be like, listen here, you little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I was, I've always been like that. And it's just like, now I have to be like, okay, you don't like me. Move along. Bye. So, Just so my my last thing, I, I try to you know learn within myself and teach others. So much of our anger and how we but the this. thing is, is like yeah. not everyone. Some people are just lost causes. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like some people don't even deserve the lesson that they're you're trying to teach. <laughs> Honestly, that. that's because something I need to It's gonna be a cold day in hell for them once they realize that yeah. they can't be acting like that because someone's gonna come along. Admit whether it's you or someone else, and they're gonna they're gonna have. I mean, perfect example. What the fuck happened to me? Someone's gonna come along, 
And so you can't be acting like that no more, Lou. You can't be doing this no more, yeah. Lou. And is it my... So maybe it's not even my place to try to teach them that lesson. It's just like, yeah, it's just like let karma handle it because karma is mm. real and karma will happen to you one way or another. It'd be a cold day in hell for that motherfucker. <laughs> a cold day in hell. But how much of this... Like, this is something that I'm trying to recognize within myself. I have a fear of looking like a bitch. I'll say that. Like, when someone's blasting me on Twitter... Or something like that. And then, like, because I, like, it all sounds great, that idea of let it go, don't reply. But I'm wondering about my thousands of followers saying, oh, Chris looks like a bitch. Like, that's my fear. Like, it, there's no other word for it. It's a fear. Is that a fear of yours as well, do you think? To look like a bitch? Yeah. I haven't, haven't come to my attention recently that it's not a good look to respond to people. Um, like that and like with an attitude and it's before I didn't have that fear because I wasn't thinking about that I yeah. wasn't thinking that I could come off as a bitch because again sometimes I'm in my own deception and my own delusion that I'm like I don't care I'm, I want to be mean to this person because they're being mean to me yeah. it's what they deserve but at the same time like well Thomas you look like an asshole too just as much as they look like an asshole now you're both you're both showing your asshole <laughs> and, and now it's like well you both look like idiots yeah. And so I could just be the bigger person and be like, okay, bye. And not even respond to it. And now, not only did no one see that I responded to someone, or being, not, not only did people not see me being an asshole because I didn't respond to that person, but no one cared about what that person said because that person got one like on Twitter. So, we'll do it. Versus, first. like, I give, I give that person a whole ass platform for a second. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, okay, because now I, now I need advice. I need advice, Thomas. How am I giving you advice? <laughs> I know, I'm a mental health channel. What is happening? So recently, I don't know if you if you heard the tea. Is that how they say it? Heard the tea? Heard about the tea? Sis? Am I doing it right? Okay. <laughs> People have been trying to expose me in videos. So now we're not even just talking about some random on Twitter. Why? Huh? Why? Why? Because they don't like they don't like what I'm doing and it hurts my feelings. So like I get it, like with with like random people on Twitter not liking me or random people in my comments not liking me. But with someone, someone who has 100,000 subscribers, someone with hundreds of thousands of subscribers, or even somebody with millions of subscribers. All right, so here's my question for you. Here's the advice I need from Thomas Albert. Dang, maybe you're in a better place than I am. When I have these YouTubers, because it's inevitably going to happen again, what should I do when these people with gigantic channels are trying to expose me, they're they're presenting things that are factually incorrect, right? And things like that. Like, not only do I, A, not want to look like a bitch, but I don't want misinformation out there about me. At what point do I have to respond and say, what they said is not true. I never said that in a video. They took things out of context. Like, how do I deal with that? Unless they're coming for, I think the biggest thing, okay, so recently, I, had a situation where someone tried to say that my eating disorder was unreal. And when that, when something so serious that I've struggled with for five years of my life is being challenged by someone with a huge platform, it can be a little bit absolutely entirely infuriating because I'm sitting there healing, healing that situation every single day of my life healing from that every mm -hmm. single day and every single day I still struggle struggle where you know I, I'm like getting triggered and like flustered right now and I like mm -hmm. want to cry because it's like when you are sitting there and trying to heal from something so serious and someone's out of fucking left field with a huge platform wants to make such a huge false accusation like that to make me look like a horrible person it's kind of infuriating. And I think situations like that where something like that, where, okay, let's say someone's, like, trying to, like, disapprove of, um, I don't know, like, you're, what you're doing now, like, saying that you're fake. Or, like, you don't do the real people, thing. Yeah, people think that because I'm using YouTubers as an example to talk about mental health topics, that I'm a... People have been telling me that I am a drama channel trying to disguise myself as a mental health channel. That's what I'm getting. So that's what I'm dealing with. Well, I think stuff like that, you just have to ignore it and keep pushing because, like, I mean, eventually people will understand what you're trying to do. Like, eventually, because mm -hmm. you already have a core audience that understands what you're trying to do. 
And then you have these other people that are probably fans of the people that you're talking about being like, you know, this is this da 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 da, da. Mm-hmm. But what you're trying to, because I do see, I mean, I don't know if you know this, but I do see a lot of other big influencers thinking that you're really fucking cool and that you're doing mm-hmm. a really awesome thing. You're, you're yeah. you know, bringing things to light. And sometimes, sometimes it can be, you know, trying, like, as long as you're not out, out here diagnosing people. Yeah. Which I have never done. Yeah. As long as you're not out here, you know, diagnosing influence like you're associated by, like, you're yeah. doing this, you're doing this, you're doing this, but you're giving like, okay, maybe this is like, oh, you know, as long as you're aware that you're doing that, you shouldn't have to care about what A, B, C, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, O, P is saying yeah. because they don't get it and they don't have to get it because as long as you have all these other people who get it and you get it, yeah. fuck that person who doesn't get it. It's something I noticed because I recently made a response video where I felt completely justified. I thought it was okay to do but as I was reading the comments, I noticed something that you mentioned. This person and myself share some of the same subscribers and they didn't like like how they were about to have to pick sides and stuff. So now I'm like, now I feel like we were two parents putting a, a child in between. So that's another thing that I'm trying to look at. Like, Well, the thing is, is like, I will never understand why anyone as an audience or a consumer of YouTube would ever pick sides. Mm-hmm. Um, influencers, I feel like that is the dumbest shit. I feel like, please just enjoy whoever you want to enjoy. Please do not be so. I don't get it. I don't. I mean, I get a lot of it's just you know young kids feeling like they need to fit in in some capacity. Yeah. And you know, like you know, if everyone hates one person, it's like okay, well, I hate them too, so I'm fitting in. Like, you love me. I get that's very. It's a. It's very. We're living in a pick me world. Yeah. Do you even get? Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, it's like a like a pick me, pick me, yeah. like be friends with me. And people are me. picking teams and, and stuff yeah. like that. And they want to like, be on that person. Like, yeah, that, that's a whole other thing. I'm not yeah. even going to expand on that, but I know. But what yeah, you're we doing. live we live in a pick me world, and like, um, that's very much so what people do. And you just have to like, you kind of have to let people just be. I, I, I we can go on a whole thing about how mm-hmm. people want to be, you know, stand this person, but won't. You know, it's so crazy because I, I used to be like that, but with celebrities. I would be like, oh, I would, I would be like, oh, everyone hates Nicki Minaj now, so I have to hate Nicki Minaj. Yeah, and it's like, it's like high school. That's an example. Product, that's right? not an actual thing. That yeah, I do, yeah, but like that, yeah, right? like that's an example of like, it's like, oh, well, all these people, so I have to fit in, right? Like, oh, everyone loves Ariana Grande, so I have to love Ariana Grande. Or like, these are just examples. This is not actually like my mentality yeah. now, but like, or like, oh, you know, everyone hates this person, so I think that like, I used to be like that. I think it's more of an immaturity thing rather than like a. Or like, mm-hmm. And I also feel like it's a lot of people not being strong in their own identity and their own thing mm-hmm. because, you know, it's hard to be strong in your own identity when some a lot of people's identities are fucking belittled every single day. So I, under- hey. I understand that, like, mm. you know, I understand that that's a lot of mentality nowadays because Twitter, it's like people, you know, some people identify as trans and, like, then there will be someone completely out of left field being like, you're invalid. So I understand that, like, there's people yeah. that are a lot of pick me now. That's but interesting. I'm so smart. <laughs> yeah. I was like, well, Thomas, Thomas Halbert being a genius for 30 minutes. Uh, it's just like, so you just have to let people be people and just hope for the best. Honestly, it's it's a YouTube, and this shit is like, you are mm-hmm. blindfolded and throwing rocks in the dark yeah. and hoping something lands and Okay, sticks. so how about this? To end this video... Thomas, will you be my accountability partner? So the next time somebody tries to expose me. Bitch, I can barely hold myself accountable. <laughs> the next time somebody exposes me, I'm going to text you and say, yo, I want to respond to this. And I'll say that. Okay. That's it. That's it. Accountability partners ain't that hard to come by. I mean, I'm like the same way with my friend Danielle. Like, okay. just see it. I'm like, I want to respond. Or, my, or like, I'm just like, I want to respond. And they're like, nope. Mm-mm. Well, Danielle's like, I'll just curse them. She's like, oh, I need to find me a Danielle. Okay. She's just like, I'll curse them. All right. <laughs> Deal. All right, man. This video was longer, but what? Anyways, thank you so much, Thomas, for talking. About- I learned some stuff, and I appreciate it. And you got a lot of cool stuff going on. How can people make sure that they're keeping up with you and all the beautiful stuff happening in your life? Like, where can they find this information? So, people can follow me on Twitter, because I'm always on Twitter. Um, at Thomas Biddy with two Y's. I hate my username. Okay. I'm going to be more active on Instagram now this year, putting out, pumping out content for that. And I think 
YouTube, we're working on some pretty dope crap, like something that I feel like no one's really gone to these links before. And I'm really excited that, you know, me and my team are working on some really cool content and changing shit up this year. We're going to shake the table. Yeah, shake things up. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Thomas. Make sure you like this video. Hit that subscription button. Turn on notification bells. And we'll see you next time. Ha, ha, ha.